Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about adaptation and appropriation and just doing a quick overview so you get the basic understanding of the difference between the two. So we'll start with the definition. Um, adaptation, so it comes from the verb adapt or to adapt. And you'll see in blue, the most important parts here are that when we're adapting something, we're modifying it. Now you'll see that in this definition, it says suitable for a new purpose, new use or purpose. Um, also, if we come down to the second one, it's adjusted to new conditions. And then the third one is more specific to art and literature, which is alter for filming, broadcasting or the stage. So simple definition, adapting is to make suitable for a new context. Now you notice that I didn't use the word purpose and I did that for a very specific purpose. Um, and that's so that we can distinguish between adaptation and appropriation. So I've said adaptation is something that has been modified to suit the needs of a new context. So um, for example, writing with a quill, which is basically just a feather, you cut off the, a little bit of the end to make it sharp and then you dip it in ink, scratch the ink onto the page. Now obviously this isn't ideal for um, a whole range of different contexts, partly because it makes a hell of a lot of mess and also because it's actually not very easy to use. So over the years people have adapted that basic idea, so paying attention to that word adapted, that basic idea to suit the needs of different contexts. Um, people didn't always want to sit at a desk with a little container of ink and have to go and find a feather and then cut the feather. They wanted something a little bit more portable, something a little bit more practical. So over the years we've developed this whole range of different kinds of pens and they're for different uses in different contexts. And you'll see that they create different shape, different types of lines. They use different amounts of ink, different types of ink. And all of those are to suit the different contexts in which we use a pen. So let's compare that then to appropriation. So when we talk about appropriation from the verb appropriate or to appropriate, which is to take something for one's own use, basically to steal. Or another sense of that word is to devote to a special purpose. So we've got appropriate, take something for one's own use, and that's very important. But then this idea of appropriation and appropriation is something that has been modified. So we've still got this idea of modification, but it's to suit a new purpose. And what's often key is that that new purpose is often unrelated to that of the original. If we stay with our idea of the pen, um, you'll see that what I've got here is a pen and I've pulled it apart. What people often do with pens is they appropriate the pen and they use it for a different purpose. For example, the hollow tube was often used to make a little rudimentary pea shooter. So basically you put something small in one end of the pen and then you blow it out through the pen and that basically makes a projectile pen. You'll see that it's got no relationship whatsoever to its original purpose. Likewise, you, you see in movies where people do an emergency tracheotomy, you know, they cut the hole in the person's throat and stick the pen in to help them breathe. Likewise, the actual pen, the tip of it can be used as like a little makeshift hole punch or as a poker to push things out of other things. All right, so let's have a look at how that works in texts. All right, so with an adaptation, we can go from, for example, a novel to film. We can go from a novel to, for example, a graphic novel, or we could go from even like a film to a musical. These are all examples of adaptation. And in these, the main idea, the main meaning or the message remains fairly consistent with the original. So the idea is that they have adapted it to a new context without changing the meaning of the original, trying to stay true to the original composer's purpose. So some examples, Jane Austen's Emma. So we've got like the TV miniseries down the bottom there. Then you'll see in film, the one down the bottom in the middle, the white one, a fairly straight adaptation. But then we also have up the top on the right is Clueless, which is a modern adaptation of Jane Austen's Emma. The reason why that's an adaptation is because the composers were trying to stick with the original ideas of Jane Austen as far as they understood them, but create it for a modern context. So you'll see then I'm using that word context again. Remembering that adaptation is really about keeping the idea consistent, but adapting it to suit a different context, which in our case is quite often a different medium. 
If we compare that then with appropriation, um, again, you can have something appropriated from novel to film or from novel to even another novel, graphic novel, or likewise, you can have it appropriated from a film to a musical, for example. One of the other things you see a little bit more often is also like an appropriation from between the same medium. So from novel to novel. But what's important here is the main idea, the meaning or the message is actually transformed. The composer is not really too worried about um, maintaining whatever it was that the original composer was trying to communicate. They're basically using that original text for their own purpose to communicate their own ideas. All right, so let's have a look at some examples of that in art. Um, because quite often the this idea of appropriation is much better understood when you look at works by people like Banksy, for example. On the left there, the famous painting Claude Monet's Water Lilies and Japanese Bridge. And it is really about expressing the individual's own experience. Um, that's a very simplified explanation, but you get the idea. Whereas Banksy, he's not really too worried about re-communicating whatever it was that Monet was communicating. He's really interested in making his own comment. Um, and he's using Monet's painting as a way to do that, as a comment on contemporary society. That's not so much creating something that was conveying the same message as Monet, it was more about going, hey, this is a really useful artwork for me to convey what I want to convey. So he's basically stolen Monet's artwork and used it for his own purpose. All right, so now that you've got this idea um, about the difference between adaptation and appropriation, I'm just going to give you a statement, but I want you to think about. Um, there are no real adaptations, only appropriations. What do you think about this? I want you to be thinking about why that statement might be be made, whether or not there's any validity to it, um, and whether or not you agree with it. If you agree with it, then why? If you disagree, then why? Perhaps you're somewhere in between. All right, the last thing we're gonna, I'm going to take you through is just some related terms. So some terms that you can maybe look up, but start to think about in terms of your own discussions of adaptation and appropriation. So you've got the tension between authenticity and fidelity, We've got this concept of authority, intertextuality, and then finally the tension between imitation and emulation. So there we are, that's a quick little summary of the difference between adaptation and appropriation. Hope it's been helpful.